Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. In a previous video, we calculated the thrust of a rocket, and today I kind of want to go over how multi-stage rocketing works. Now, multi-stage rocketing is when a rocket will use two or more stages during a launch, with each stage carrying its own engine and fuel. And the benefit in staging is that the rocket can shed its dead weight. This overall decrease in mass will help increase its overall velocity. So in this video, I want to show you mathematically the difference in speeds between a single-stage rocket and a two-stage rocket. So I came across this problem in my classical mechanics book, and I want to work through it as I think it is a great example to introduce this topic. To illustrate the use of a multi-stage rocket, consider the following. A. A certain rocket carries 60% of its initial mass as fuel. What is the rocket's final speed? accelerating from rest in free space if it burns all its fuel in a single stage. Express your answer as a multiple of the exhaust velocity. And B. Suppose instead it burns the fuel in two stages as follows. In the first stage it burns a mass of 0.3 times the initial mass of fuel. It then jettisons the first stage fuel tank, which has a mass of 0.1 of the initial mass, and then burns the remaining 0.3 of the, uh, of the initial mass of fuel. Find the final speed in this case, assuming the same values of the exhaust velocity throughout and compare. Okay, great. So part one is we're going to find the speed of the single stage rocket. And this equation is going to tell us that. So here we're going to have the speed is going to be equal to the initial velocity plus the exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass over the uh, final mass. Now, it says that it was starting from rest, so the initial velocity is going to equal zero. And since uh, all the fuel is going to be spent in uh, part one, it says 60% of its mass is going to be lost uh, as fuel, we know that the uh, initial mass is going to be 0.6, we're going to represent 60% of the initial mass is 0.6 times the initial mass. So that means the uh, mass after the fuel has been spent is going to be represented by m equals the initial mass minus 60% of it that's going to be lost as fuel, which is 0.6 times the uh, initial mass. And we're going to separate our variables here. six and what we get is point four of the initial mass is m so we're going to plug this into our equation so the velocity for stage one is going to be zero plus the exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass over 40%.4 of the initial mass. Of course, these are going to cancel out. So let's write this as velocity is going to equal, or the speed is going to equal the exhaust velocity times the natural log of 1 over. Point four, and if I get my calculator here, that is going to equal I'm going to round up, it's going to be two point five, which equals. see here all right so the final speed is going to be 0 0.92 of the exhaust velocity so this is our speed using only a single stage rocket
Now for part two, we're gonna use the same equation, except we're gonna to have to modify it a little bit. Since this is gonna be two stages um, for this rocket, we're gonna to have to compare both speeds here. So we're gonna set the velocity for the first stage, and that's just gonna be represented by VF of one. And then for the second stage, the velocity is gonna be represented as VF of two. So let's work through part B for the rocket going through two stages. So we have to set up the first stage. And so the first stage, the mass is gonna be changed because it's gonna lose 30% uh, of its initial mass. And so for the first stage, For the first stage, since it's going from rest, the initial velocity is going to be zero again. But the final mass is going to be the initial mass minus 30 percent, which is going to be 0.3 of the initial mass. And we do like we did last time. And so we get m equals 0 0.7 of the initial mass. So the speed for the first stage is going to equal the exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass over 0 0.7. 7 M9. That cancels out. And so we have the exhaust velocity times the natural log of 1 over 0 0.7. After the first stage, the rocket is just going to get rid of that fuel tank. And it said that the fuel tank is going to weigh 0.1 or 10% of the initial mass. So now we have to calculate that in from the 0.7 that we found after the total fuel has been spent. So to get the mass of the rocket for stage two, we're going to need to take 0 0.7 and subtract. This is simple math here, but I feel it's important to write it out. And I'm going to put M1 here to represent the mass of the first stage of the rocket. And so that's going to equal 0 0.6 M0. And I should probably just to make sure it's clear, 0 0.7 M0 here. Now, don't let this variable confuse you. That's just to let you know this is 10% the fuel tank because we're calculating the weight of the rocket. So there's a lot of changing mass. There's the changing mass from the fuel that's being spent and there's the changing mass of the actual stages of the rocket as it's launching. So once all the fuel is spent, that stage of the rocket gets released as well. So we're just making sure we're keeping track of all our variables in this calculation. So after the second stage, um, the fuel, 30% uh, of the fuel is used. So that means the mass of the rocket changes again. So that means, and this is after the first stage, after and that's after the first stage here. So after the second stage, what we're left with, we're gonna take this final initial mass here from the first stage 0 0.6 and we're going to subtract 
since 30% of the fuel is lost, it's going to be 0.3 M, M naught, and then that leaves us with 0.3 MO for the second stage. And now we're going to take the same equation and since the speed is going to be zero again for v naught, that's going to leave our equation v f of two. The speed is going to be the exhaust velocity times the natural log of zero point six over 0 0.3. Um, I don't want to throw anyone off here, so. And then those just cancel out. So that means the final speed here, something I know that I'm looking at, I'm going to have to add these two up together. I'm going to have to add the stage one speed with the stage two speed. Because remember, as it's launching, as it's launching, it's going to jettison the, the first stage. So that means the second stage is going to take off from where the last speed of the first stage left off. So what we're going to have to do is take the exhaust velocity times the natural log that we found in stage one, which is one over 0 0.7, and then add that to the speed for the second stage. Which is a natural log of 0 0.6 over 0 0.3. And then we're going to separate our terms here. I'm going to pull out at the exhaust velocity variable. And then what we're left with is the natural log of. 0 log of 0 0.6 over 0 0.3. Um, now there's an identity that should be common. There's an identity that's going to be common that you should recognize uh, right now. So when you're adding two natural logs, you can actually multiply together what's in the parenthesis. So what that's going to be is going to be the exhaust velocity times the natural log of 1 over 0 0.7 times 0 0.6 over 0 0.3. And then you just do the simple multiplication here. You just multiply them over. So it'll be 0 0.06 over 0 0.21, I believe. Yes. So it's going to be 0 0.21 and then if I get my calculator here
that's going to equal the exhaust velocity times the natural log. Actually, oops. Since I'm multiplying out, it's just going to be the exhaust velocity times 1.05. So the speed we get for the after the second stage is equal 1.05. So from these numbers here, we can see that the second, uh, the second stage is greater than the speed that we got from a single stage rocket. Because you remember the single stage rocket, our final speed is we got 0.92 of the uh, escape velocity. So here we can see that VF2 the speed for the second stage equal to 1.05 and then that's greater than and then that's greater than what we got for the single stage which is 0 0.92 times the escape velocity. Now in the future, rockets may be able to launch as a single stage once our technology and engineering improve. But I think that this was a good problem, not only dem demonstrating the usefulness of a multi-stage rocket, but verifying it mathematically. And I want to do more videos like this to prove things mathematically, so let me know in the comments below if you found this video helpful. And as always, everyone, stay educated and educate others. Hope you have a great day.